Tonight, Google gets into the domain registration business, Glass expands to the UK, and the aftermarket kit that could turn your vehicle into a self-driving car. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 114 for Monday, June 23rd, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,400 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. I'm Sarah Lane. Hello, everybody, and let's get right into the tech feed. Google announced today that it's building a domain registration service called Google Domains. It's an invite-only beta for now at domains.google.com. The company says that according to its research, 55% of small businesses don't have websites, and this could help companies get started with their online presence. Google Domains won't include hosting, but website building providers Squarespace, you might have heard of them, Wix, Weebly, and Shopify have all signed on as partners. One Google Dom Once Google Domain launches, customers will have the option to buy and sell domains through the service, and Google won't charge them extra to register their domain or their domains privately. Other perks? You can create up to 100 email addresses on the domain and as many as 100 customized subdomains. Google Domains will use Google's own DNS servers as well. Nice and snappy. So is Tony Fidel the new head of hardware at Google or not? A report in the information this morning claimed that Fidel, who's former Apple executive and current CEO of Nest, now owned by Google, would take over Google's entire hardware division. Now that was interesting, particularly because Google hasn't built a lot of its own products up until now. Nexus devices, Chromebooks, Google TV set-top boxes have all been built by partners. Although the company has experimented with the Chrome Pixel, Chromebook Pixel, Chromecast, and Nexus Q. However, Fidel tweeted about two and a half hours ago that this claim is completely wrong and that he runs Nest as a separate business with its own management. So, heard it from the horse's mouth. Google Glass is finally available outside the U.S. to one lucky country, the U.K. The Explorer edition is being sold through the Google Play Store for £1,000 sterling and is available in cotton, charcoal, tangerine, shale, and sky colors. Google is also selling the frames from its titanium collection as an optional add-on. Each Explorer edition comes with an extra frame or shade for free. Additional frames are £175 and individual shades cost 120 pounds all items are listed to ship within one to two business days and if you live in london you can try glass at one of google's demo days that's happening on june 27th and 28th which is good timing since google's io starts this wednesday june 25th in san francisco the parking wars are heating up app-wise. This morning in San Francisco, city attorney Dennis Herrera sent a company called Monkey Parking a cease and desist letter on grounds that their business is illegal. Monkey Parking's app allows people to post information about the spot they're about to leave and then other drivers pay for that information, kind of swoop in. The company currently operates in two cities, Rome and San Francisco, okay. A cease and desist letter to the company cites that San Francisco police code, quote, it shall be unlawful for any person, firm, or corporation to enter into a lease, rental agreement, or contract of any kind, written or oral, with or without compensation for the use of any street or sidewalk. The city warns it could cite drivers $300 per transaction and that the company could face civil penalties of up to $2,500 per violation. The city attorney is giving monkey parking, monkey parking until July 11th to end operations in the city or face further legal action, according to the letter. Now, this might have something to do with the fact that San Francisco ended a trial of its own a sensor based parking system and then an app that helped drivers find open parking spaces based on those sensors late last year. But the San Francisco Chronicle reported that the program is about to be restarted and expanded. Microsoft has announced it will begin offering 15 gigabytes of free storage to OneDrive users, which is a bump up from 7 gigabytes. And that also puts OneDrive on the same pricing line as Google Drive, which also offers 15 gigabytes of free space. 
Microsoft also says within the next month, Office 365 users will get one terabyte of free space. That's up from 20 gigabytes. Quite a, quite a bump. The one terabyte cap was previously reserved for Office 365's business users. Microsoft also dropped the price of its monthly plans to $1.99 for 100 gigabytes, down from $7.49, and $3.99 for 200 gigabytes, down from $11.49. Current OneDrive or Office 365 users will automatically see their storage limits go up. And rounding out some Microsoft news, the company is offering a new program where you can get up to $650 in store credit if you trade in select MacBook Air models through July 31st of this year. The MacBook Air must power on to be considered working. If it's water damaged or has a cracked screen, it is not considered a working device. And depending on the overall condition, the trade-in value may be actually less than the $650 credit. Now, back in September of last year, Microsoft offered up to $200 towards a Surface if you traded in an old iPad. The company also has a Recycle for Rewards program, which allows people to trade in their old device for a gift card toward an Xbox or tablet or a smartphone or something else that Microsoft makes. Amazon's instant video app on iOS now includes free episodes for selected ad-supported TV shows, plus HBO content like The Sopranos, The Wire, Deadwood, and Boardwalk Empire. Instant video users will be able to stream the first episode of selected TV shows for free. These shows will include advertising breaks both before and during video playback. The company already offers the same feature on Kindle Fire devices and on the Roku, where it can be discovered via the first free episode carousel from the TV or video section. No word on an Android app update as of yet. Coming up, Google Glass is really fashionable. No, no, really it is. It's high fashion. And up next, I'll chat with Tim Stevens from CNET about an aftermarket kit designed to make your car self-driving. But first, let's take a moment to thank lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. How about uh, Photoshop? How good are you at Photoshop? I'm not very good at all. I'd like to build my own IS app, iOS app too, but I don't know how to do that either. You know, I'm not even really a very good photographer. Lynda.com is great for people like me because they offer thousands of online video courses in software, creative, and business skills across a wide variety of subjects. With a Lynda.com subscription as a member, you receive unlimited access to the entire course library. The company works with software companies, so... The, updated, the training is updated. It's often the same day as new versions hit the market. So you're never learning some outdated version of software. It's all the latest skills. You can learn from top experts. All of the courses are produced at the highest quality. These aren't homemade videos. They, they don't look bad. I mean, there's really, really professional stuff. If you have 15 minutes or maybe you have 15 hours, you can learn as much as you want, when you want, at your own pace, on your own terms. It's only $25 per month for access to the entire lynda.com course library, or for $37.50 per month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. And you can try lynda.com right now with a free, a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 to access the entire library, 2,400 courses, completely free for seven days. That's lynda.com slash TN2. All right, joining me now is Tim Stevens, editor-at-large over at CNET. Hey, Tim. Hey, Sarah. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Okay, I want to talk about this add-on that's going to make my car that is not a self-driving car a self-driving car. At least we're getting a step closer towards that. And if you own an Audi A4, uh, that's basically what this this system is limited to. But yeah, for $10,000, in theory, in uh, the year 2015, if you are one of 50 people who pre-order this system, basically it's a set of sensors that bolt onto the roof of your Audi A4 and no other car. Uh, and at that point, there are also some uh, extensions that need to be mounted behind the gas and brake pedals of the car. And uh, there's a computer that sits in the trunk. Uh, and that system, which is all self-contained, will allow the car to basically be like a smart cruise control. So effectively, you can go on the highway, Hit a button on your steering wheel, and the car will maintain current speed. It will speed up or slow down based on traffic conditions, and presumably, uh, it will avoid accidents. At least, hopefully. You know the the video that we're watching of of the system in action. I'm noticing Ocean Beach in San Francisco, California. I'm recognizing some of these streets. How how far can I drive if I've even if I've got the Audi A4? Can I just drive anywhere I want, or is it limited to certain roads? 
It's definitely limited to certain roads. They're not saying exactly what roads will be available in 2015, but certainly it will be roads within the Bay Area. Also worth pointing out, it will not work in the rain. It will not work in the snow. It will not work at night. Uh, so, you know, it does get dark in the Bay Area, but it doesn't really rain or snow too much. So that's at least helpful in that situation. But yeah, roads will have to be basically whitelisted where they'll be scanned by this company. And they're also hoping to do some crowdsource scanning as well to basically ensure that the roads are, you know, kind of well painted enough, clear enough, uh, well paved enough to be able to use this kind of system. Okay, uh, you're right that at least at this time of year, California isn't very wet, not a lot of rain, really doesn't snow much, Not well, not in the Bay Area anyway, but not being able to drive at night, doesn't that seem pretty limited for a system like this, or, or is that just, is this just the first iteration of what will be kinks that are ironed out? It's... Uh a similar limitation that Google is actually facing with its self-driving cars as well. One of the issues with laser scanners is that they basically don't really work very well in, in inclement conditions. Now, night is no problem at all, usually for these systems. Uh, but basically, when you're talking about an aftermarket system that's bolted on the roof, it has to be dependent on the headlights in the car. You know, if you're building a, a, a boutique uh, self-driving car from the ground up, you can put all the lights you want to on there to make sure that the road markings are lit up at night. Uh, but if you're bolting something on the roof, you're dependent on what Audi has put it in there. And, you know, those headlights could be dirty as well. So I think that's the reason that they're not going to do it at night. Um, but in inclement weather conditions, that's, that's actually a pretty common thing in self-driving cars right now anyway. On the driver's side, is there any particular uh, extra permits or, you know, special license that you'll have to have to be able to, to, to be trusted with a self-driving car? It's still a big question mark right now. For the testing phase, absolutely, you do. Uh, there's laws on the books in California that regulate exactly what you need to, to know how to do to test these sorts of systems. Uh, and, and they regulate things like if there's any incident where you need to override the automated system, you need to report that to the state, actually, so that the state can be keeping track of how safe these systems are during testing. Uh, but when it comes to actually deploying these systems, there's really not a lot out there because really there aren't uh, any of these systems that are available for sale yet. And the 2015 could make this the first system on sale. Volvo is the first system that I know that has set a date, and they said 2017. Uh, so this this cruise system could be out um, earlier than that. But again, they're only limiting it to 50 people, which makes me a little bit uh, concerned. You know, if you do a beta test with limited access for an app, that does limit your liability quite a bit. You know, if you break 50 phones, then you owe 50 people new phones. Uh, but if you deploy 50 cars and those 50 cars, then, you know, I hate to sound apocalyptic, but if those 50 cars then crash into crowds of people, uh, your liability is not really well contained at all. This is also an aftermarket product. I, I know self-driving cars are on a lot of people's mind, but we equate that with what Google's doing. Could this help Google? Is this, is this you know, something that, you know, Google could find in, in huge competition? I mean, I guess in a way we're all moving towards the same goal, but... What do you think Google thinks about this? I don't know that Google's too worried about this. It still remains to be seen exactly what Google wants to do with self-driving cars. Uh, from every indication that we're getting thus far, you know, they haven't announced a partnership with a major auto manufacturer yet, and Google I.O. is just a couple of days away, so maybe that will be their opportunity to do so. But it seems right now with their self-driving cars, they're really looking to basically build the next generation of Uber where you don't need a driver anymore. You launch the Uber app, the car shows up at your doorstep, and then you hop in and go where you want to go. Uh, so from that perspective, no, I don't think Google really has anything to worry about here. Uh, if anything, this will basically bring the sort of smarts back to the aftermarket accessories. So if you have a, a car already on the market, you don't want to buy a new car just to get self-driving functionality. This will enable you to do so in theory. Um, but, you know, most people buy a new car every four years at this point. Uh, whether or not they'd be willing to make a $10,000 investment to retrofit their old one versus simply upgrading to a new Audi, that, uh, that's a big question in my mind as well. Well, thanks so much, Tim. Tim Stevens, editor at large over at CNET. I know that you're actually reviewing the new electric Harley Davidson motorcycle, uh, which is, sounds pretty exciting. And I know you are a car and bike guy, so you must be pretty excited about that. When is that review going up? I just went live, actually. So it's uh, we got Yay. a preview ride in New York City today, so you can check it out uh, at CNET.com. But yeah, it was pretty fun to ride around the streets of New York. Uh, New York City, not exactly the best place to yeah, you're test a, brave a guy. motorcycle. Um, but, uh, but it is a pretty cool bike, so yeah, check it out. All right. Thanks so much, Tim. Thank you, sir. All right. Finally, uh, if you call yourself a glass hole, I guess if you have Google Glass, you don't really call yourself that, but you can call yourself a fashionable one. Online luxury fashion retailer Netta Porte is now carrying limited edition DVF made for glass. That's a version of Google Glass designed by Diane von Furstenberg and made to look very, you know, designery if you're into that sort of thing. I actually kind of like the ones on the right. Priced at $1,800, the glass versions come in colors like brown, teal, plum, charcoal, and white, each with matching shades. 
Matching white shades? Okay. They're currently only available for shipping to U.S. customers, and they support prescription lenses and include a one-year warranty. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today. That's tomorrow morning and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Well, it's not morning on the East Coast, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.